far, you know, like I get five years off and I come back to fight at a heavier weight class girl that's massive and it's Alex Pereira's younger sister. I'm going to be busy, 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 getting as many fights as I can and then um, hopefully we'll be getting the call, you know, late June, early July for the UFC. You know, you're known as uh, as many things, right? You're, you're a mom. You yeah. are a fighter, the tiny tank. Um, you're a champion in your own right, right? Uh, gym owner, promotion president or CEO, if you will. <laughs> when it's all said and done, right? Uh, and I know it's hard to think about the end when you're just getting started. But when it's all said and done, how would you want Chelsea Connor, the fighter and the person, to be remembered. All right, so what is up, guys, and happy holidays. Thank you for stopping by episode 22 of The Will vs. The Way. This is a special episode for you guys. We have our first guest on the podcast, so this is a big deal. LFA strawweight Chelsea Connor stopped by to talk with us, and we couldn't be more grateful. We'll also start and finish off the card with UFC 296 reaction and recap, so be sure to stay tuned for all of that for your holiday special the Will vs. The Way podcast, episode 22. You saw that Josh Emmett knockout? Hmm? You saw that Josh Emmett knockout? Man, what was it? Why did he do dude like that, bro? That was bad. I told you it was short notice, Why did he do him like that? Didn't I tell that? you short Why notice? Did he... It was short notice, bro. It's hard. What's bro name he punched on? What was it? Bryce Mitchell. Why he punched Bryce Mitchell like that, dog? He was mad because we had in the last fight. He took that <laughs> shit out on him. He took that shit out on Bryce Mitchell. Bryce Mitchell didn't have shit to do with it. <laughs> He busted it. Nah, man. Come on, bro. Like, I don't know how much he was training or whatever, but he's... Emmett's a hard guy to take on short notice. That's the thing. Emmett's a hard guy to take on short notice. Because think about it. That's he's, hard, though? He's a wrestler, right? So it's going to be hard to take him now. You got to figure out where the holes in his wrestling game is. Yeah. Right? So you got to... I feel like in order to take out a guy like Emmett, you got to have a, either game plan or you just got to come to scrap. No, he <clears> came <throat> to scrap and what happened? No, no, he <laughs> came... No, he didn't... He barely threw any punches. Oh, Man. He was looking for his entries on the takedown, but it's like if you haven't game planned for that, it's hard to just take a wrestler down. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Especially when he he's gonna throw. No, he did throw one punch. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't in the eight fifty one an atomic bomb. Yeah. He knocked Bryce Mitchell out. Bryce people, Mitchell I feel like people fit. like people newer to the sport had a bad rap on on Josh Hammond because they ain't I seen did. him win. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you. What are you talking about? Don't say people me. Yeah. That was him. No, but like, <laughs> yeah. So I seen Josh Emmett get beat up by Yair and then Ilya. Yair beat the Who shit he out beat Josh though. Him. He beat. Oh no, he beat Calvin Cater. But like that was like a very close fight. So it's like people didn't. I feel like people didn't really get to know him. I've seen him that. lose weight worse than I seen him win. Nah, he fashion. just he equaled all that out. To that no, he didn't. He equaled all that. He off. punched on Bryce. Bryce Mitchell had two days to get ready for this fight and got slipped bad. <laughs> <laughs> he got <laughs> he had two days to get seized up. That was bad. <laughs> that was nasty. I'm, I'm not even gonna do it. We heard it. We heard it. It's not fitting. That's not even funny, bro. Damn. That's actually not funny. It was, <laughs> that was just a reaction to laugh, bro. No. Was, <laughs> wow. Damn, yeah, that's bad. Damn. Oh. His, the, but the good thing is he's healthy. He's healthy. He's Mike Mitchell is a good person, too. No, he is. A great person. No, but he... No, but that don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it don't matter. Josh <laughs> Shippen didn't care nothing about that. Josh Hibbert did not care about none of that. Yeah, Josh Hibbert. UFC 296. He was supposed to fight Giga. That was going to be a hard fight. I know he came in probably planning on wrestling. Yeah. Damn, game plan really went out the window for both of them. Because he, he ended up getting a grappler. He was, I'm about to punch on bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to hit him. I'm finally ready to hit somebody. I'm about to hit him. And they're not going to hit me. Man, and you saw the way he stood over him, too? He See, look, he, no, that was from last fight. That wasn't from, that was. No, it's pent up. This dude had for two sure. days to get ready. He don't know who this Bryce Mitchell mm -hmm. is. Yeah, no, nah, it was definitely. He got mad. His head got rocked on the cage last fight. No, don't Bryce Mitchell. You good, bro? <laughs> no, nah, that fight with Ilya really, like, I feel like, cause that was a Ilya really Punched broke him down. I'm scared for Volk. I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of scared for Volk. You think he's going on a decline? I I don't even necessarily think it's a decline, but it's gonna look like it if he loses. His head. He had a bobblehead <clears throat> moment on the cage. Yeah, his head nah. bobbled. 
Yeah. Three times. Yeah. Whipple wobble woo. Yeah, the Islam fight wasn't, <laughs> wasn't good for his health. Definitely was not good for but his health. But then he fights somebody. He's, now he's fighting somebody else in like two weeks. Like, what? <laughs> like, nah, he's had time. He's had time. Pereira came back against Jan Blahovic three months after he got slept by his. So <laughs> I feel like I feel like Volk coming back right now. It's you know it's it's similar. It's cool. And he ate some punches from Jan too, but he just didn't drop. So, but as far as like it's just going against that style of a matchup. Like Volk is short, so he's gonna have to enter with. They're the same height. They're both tiny. Bro. Yeah, but he's gonna have to enter with the hands. He's gonna have to throw hands. He's not just gonna be able to kick what his. What does Ilya do though? That's the thing. He and throw, then, and then he's he has a Greco Roman background, <laughs> just like Volk. Yeah, throw the thing. Except he has like I feel like he could be minus. He could be like the boxing version of Volk, except better on the ground. Because I think he's mm. better on the ground. He's his black belt in jujitsu. He you saw what he did to Bryce Mitchell, ragdolled him all over the like. All Bryce the, Mitchell needs don't time. don't even don't Bryce Mitchell needs don't. Cause Bryce Mitchell, he's like that. He's, right. he's no, he, he's good. He just should have shouldn't have. Nah, came but in how you gonna say he like that? First of all, he shouldn't have came in on short notice against Josh Emmett. That's a bad idea. That's a bad because he's never been an easy guy to take down. Like I understand if it was like some kickboxer who didn't have a wrestling background, but you coming in again? Come on, bro. Like if it was like an Edson Barboza, I'd even understand that. He beat Edson Barboza. You don't remember that? He dropped him. He took him down. He beat him. Like come on now. Don't put don't put shame on that nigga's name. I mean, but he did the ragdoll knocked out. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> by <it. laughs> by two yeah. people knocked out and ragdoll. That's is not fight. two words That's you want to use. It. That's I mean, the fight game, and and those two people mm-hmm. could be world champions one day. Josh Emmett, no, but really, yes. Josh Emmett was just mad because of whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying it. I don't, I don't care, bro. Right, I don't funny. care, dog. Yeah, no, it's true. UFC 296, man. What, but what else with that card? That that card, it was weird because it started off hot. It started off. What, did you watch the prelims at all? The prelims, everybody was dropping. Everyone was dropping. Everybody like, was, was UFC dropping. Austin, like, bro. What was that dude? Like, what was the dude? Was like an ape. What was the uh, dude like an ape in the um, <laughs> in the uh, bro? Every time he hit you, you just wobble. What was that dude, bro? Pat. Uh, oh, Pat Alonzo, Alonzo Medivhill. But every time this dude threw a punch, bro, the dude threw a hook with his hand sideways. What is that? What the? With his hand like this. A wobble pop. Damn. Bro, I, I, yeah, I had Dustin Jacoby in that fight. I thought he was going to win. Bro, he was Pat win. was in his corner. <clears throat> really? Pat was the coach. His Pat coach. Barry? You didn't hear him? I didn't know Pat was. He was screaming. I could I could hear him on the TV. Because Justin Dustin Jacoby, he's just, he actually took time away from MMA to go in and uh, kickboxing. do kickboxing. Mm-hmm. To do kickboxing, Pat was a world class kickboxer. Yeah, it, kickboxer. I know. And <clears throat> the fact that he when like, ever since he's came back to the UFC, but he looked legit, legit. Um, he got a chin on him. But we're going to talk about UFC 296 later because we have uh, a very special guest today for you guys. For episode 22? Is it 22? 22. It's 22 of wow. The Row versus The Way. And we have our first guest here, uh, LFA Strawweight, if I'm correct in saying. But she has fought in multiple weight classes, extensive amateur career. She's coming up in the pro ranks right now. And... She may be fighting soon. We're going to bring in Chelsea Connor, the tiny Uh-oh. tank. Oh. All right. There she go. Oh, yes. we're here. We're here. Miss Connor. Here. Happy holidays. How are you doing yes, today? Ma'am. Thank you. Happy holidays to you guys, too. I am doing good. <laughs> uh, so, me, just to give you a little bit of background, me and uh, Terrence were both aspiring fighters ourselves. Um, <clears throat> and... I have been in martial arts a little bit longer. Terrence, he started about a year and a half ago. I'm the casual. And uh, <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm the casual. Yes, ma'am. And, and uh, we met a while back. Uh, back when we were in high school, we both played football together and stuff like that. And uh, so yeah, now we we like watching the MMA every weekend. Uh, we like talking about it. And you are our first guest, and we're happy to be interviewing you. So that's. That's a, a pretty big mark for us, and I'm happy you could be spending your time with us today. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Come on now. Hey! 
This is the future. What's going hey. on, my friend? Hey. Tiny Tang number two. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, go upstairs, buddy. Go upstairs. What's that? Okay. Once I'm done, go. All right. Bye-bye. Well, Chelsea, that's... Oh, no, no, no. That's beautiful. Chelsea, yeah. So that's tell beautiful. us a little bit about that. So you're a mom, right? Yeah. You're... I have two kids. Wow. So I have a uh, 12-year-old, and then he is four. So, yeah. Wow. Busy. Come on, man. How, how do you juggle that? Because you're, you're a full-time fighter. You're, you're a yeah. full-time mom. There's no part-time in that, right? <laughs> no, it is, it is all full time. All gas, no break. Yes, um, ma'am. I have, a really, I have a really good support system, honestly, that, that helps me out, keep everything organized and all that, you know, fun stuff. Mm-hmm. So, but it, it definitely, it's tough to juggle at times. Right, and you also run a gym full time, right? Uh, yeah. Smile Back yeah. Academy. Uh, how did you go about starting that? Um, so we had actually had, so our fight team is called Fightopia MMA. Um, uh, and that has been around since like 2008, I believe is mm-hmm. when they started that. Um, and it's kind of like, we've always just focused on fighters. Um, and business wise, you don't, you can't really, uh, have a great business. <laughs> yeah. focusing on fighters. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So, We've basically just rebranded Fightopia to Smile Back Training Center, um, and then I kind of just took over the business side of it. So um, making sure that we have classes for you know women, children, things like that, where everyone feels welcome, and it's more of a just all around gym than just a MMA gym. So. Oh, that's what's up. So y'all teach like, uh, would y'all have like self defense classes, and then also yeah. classes for like uh, the fighters or your training partners and stuff like that as well? Yes. Yeah. That's the, I. Uh, I have a women's only cardio kickboxing class, and mm. that's what I really push the self defense in. Um, because a lot of people, I get hit up all the time for self defense classes, and it's tough to just like go to one. I mean, you guys get it being competitors and training Mm -hmm. um you can't just take one self-defense class and think that that's going to save your life so you need to get into Mm -hmm. a class that you know you're you're actively learning not that you ever have to compete with the like cardio kickboxing but you're actively learning how to throw a proper punch Mm -hmm. learning how to throw a proper kick being reminded hey after i throw that punch get my hands back to my face you know so (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's that's actually really important because like people you could see things online and you could like look at there's YouTube videos about how to do anything, right, in MMA nowadays. Yeah. And <laughs> you could learn as much as you want online, but there's no like actual experience is actually getting in there and doing it in a gym, uh and yeah. with real coaches who actually know what they're doing and talking about, right? That's um absolutely right. <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, another thing uh, on this podcast we like to do is kind of delve into not only the 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 fighting aspect of uh, MMA, but also like the mindset of martial artists. So one question I want to ask you is, would you consider yourself more of a martial artist or a fighter? Oh, definitely a fighter. I, uh, <laughs> I really, Here we go. like, I pride myself <laughs> on being able to mix it all together. And, um. Mm. You know, I, I see a lot of people, especially females, like they start in one specific art and then right. they become very one dimensional. And I never started in one specific art. I just liked fighting. So mm-hmm. I just started fighting and I was, I guess, more of like a brawler type, type style. And then once, once you have that mindset and you come in to the sport with that mindset, and it's not like, hey, I'm just going to focus on jujitsu, and I, if I'm doing jujitsu, I don't have to worry about getting punched in the face, or I'm just going to be a boxer, you know. Well, then you got to worry about takedowns. Like I mm-hmm. just focused on everything, and I feel like that's what wins me a lot of my fights is because I can blend it all together, and I'm, yeah, just very well rounded. Man, no, nah, that's that's awesome. And so you said you started off kind of like a brawler. So would you say that you never had to really be i guess some people say you can't be taught how to be tough right or you or heart can't be taught Mm -hmm. but would you say that you already had that in you from since you were back in a a kid yeah yeah 100 (laughs) percent uh you know fighting with my sisters me and my sisters were 
we're pretty mean and brutal to each other. So <laughs> shout out to my sisters for making me, uh, making me the badass. Are you the oldest? Are you the oldest or are you the youngest? Uh, I'm the youngest. Oh, so, hey. So, ah, hey, right. let me tell you, I know you had to fight tough. <laughs> I know you did. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Come on now. Come on now. Yeah, no. Nah. Come on now. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> deal with the older siblings in your own kind of way. I yeah. personally, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna act like I, I fought yeah. them. I, I used weapons. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to use my, I had to use my brain. You know, I couldn't. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'm losing. They're gonna hit yeah. me, hit me one time in the gut. Oh, it was done and over with. <laughs> uh, so transitioning back to to your your career and how this started in your mindset so you said you started off as a brawler did you not have much experience training before you started because i know you started back in 2009 you said uh fightopia was created in 2008 is that where you started training at i did not start training at fightopia right away so i i trained at another gym um which was like uh There was really no um, teaching or anything like that. It was, I trained, I think, for like a month and a half, and they threw me in the cage, which is wild looking at it. Wow. Looking back, I'm like, wow, that was, like, really quick. Um, But, and they, like, really did not teach anything. It was just like, hey, you're you're tough. Like, get in there and try it out. So, um, (laughs) it it went well for me, but uh, fast forward to, like, today's day and age, like, I don't think that, um, that would have been the same outcome had they thrown me in the cage with a month and a half of training. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the sports evolved a lot, huh? Yes, big time. That was so. That was back in, in two thousand and nine. You said a month and a yeah. half. So you started training in two thousand and nine. Yeah. Yep. Right out of high school, I had graduated in two thousand and nine. Um, I had had plans to join the Marine Corps and was heavy. Mm-hmm. Like they have specific. Uh, weight standards and things and so Mm -hmm. I couldn't get into the Marine Corps and I was just looking for something to keep me active Um, and I walked into an MMA gym and as soon as I got punched in the face I fell in love with it. Wow. You can hear us? Uh, Yay. Come on now. Okay. So So we did just start recording the interview now so I'm going to recap everything that we've (laughs) we've been over. So you you consider yourself more of a fighter than a martial artist. Uh, you got into this right after high school, back in 2009. Mm-hmm. You were getting ready to join the Marines, but they had a weight limit. Yes. And yep. so then you stepped into uh, an MMA gym. What what gym was it, by the way? Uh, it was um, called the Fighters Guild. So FG. they went by TFG. And it, was, and it was just like cardio kickboxing over there? Yeah, pretty much. They did like this, um, like fit to fight class or whatever. Uh, and then had some like people that wanted to fight. So yeah, we just got in the cage and fought. And so they just threw you in there. You know, actually, uh, funny enough, that almost could have been how your story turned out because, uh, a month and a half into training, he already had the idea, you know, I want to get into this thing to fight. So mm-hmm. he, yeah, yeah, he was trying to get in there and rush in. I there. was, I was here first. <laughs> I walked in, I walked in, I walked in. I wanted to run into yeah. a wall. I was, I was, I was ready. I was ready. Yeah. No, but he, he amped me up. Don't get it, don't get it twisted now. No. He amped me up. No, but he, when you, when you see somebody do it, it makes it a lot easier for you. I know I can do it. Right. You know? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, well, but and I, I mean, you look like an athletic dude, so I'm sure your athleticism carried you pretty far. Thank you. Yes, it did. It did. It yeah. did. Thank you. Yeah, he was he was blessed with uh, with being able to play sports in high school. Did you play any sports in high school, by the way? I uh, I ran cross country and track, and I mm. cheered. So mm. it wasn't like super um, competitive sports. They were kind of honestly, I think running cross country. Um, it kind of like helped my mental a lot for just, it was like me versus me. So I've never been in like, I've never worried about other people and like, um, you know, competing against other people. I've always just Mm -hmm. competed against me, you know? So 
that's that's been something that's been nice carrying it over to MMA. Like I don't I don't care about what everyone else is doing. I'm just gonna focus on me and being the best I can be. Yeah, Amazing nah, quality. That, nah, that's what's up. Amazing that's, quality. Exactly. Yeah. Amazing. Because even <laughs> even in other sports, that's actually something that I feel like is unique to maybe running. Because even in other sports like football, you gotta yeah. compete for a spot. Yep. So you yep. are even you're not you're not focused really on yourself. You're focused on them, and then the ones who I guess are coached well and stuff like that. Yeah, they'll focus on themselves and they'll be mm-hmm. trying to put in extra time and stuff like that, yeah. and trying to just better themselves. But especially at that age, it's I feel like it's hard not to compare yourself to people Absolutely. and stuff like that. And then it get and it gets you when you're young too. Not only yeah. do I got to worry about these people when I'm older, <laughs> I got to worry about them in little league. When we get to middle school, <laughs> when we get to high school, and then not the people in front of you and the people behind you. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. the ones yeah. behind you are the ones that you really got to worse. worry about. That's even worse. That's yeah. even, yeah. yeah. Hey. Yeah, they're going to try to bring it's it always, It's always yeah. something. It's always something. Yeah. But there's a lot of things you can do to get your mind off of that. What are some of the things you do to relax? I uh, I like to meditate. I do a lot of meditations. Really? I get up, I do a 30 minute jog every morning and that mm-hmm. really helps my mental. Like I'm just focusing on me during that time. I have a little bit of me time. As you can tell, I'm a mom. So um, <laughs> I, I don't get a lot of me time. So I just, I wake up early and like I said, I do my meditations. I run. Um, sometimes I get to sit in, a, in the sauna if I have enough mm-hmm. time. And that's when I really just, I sit, I focus, and just, like, focus on me a little bit. Needed. That's what's up. Do you, would you say yeah. that's a part of your, your morning routine? Yeah. Yeah, every morning I get up and do that. Yeah. See, see whoa, 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 whoa. That's, you're that's talking to the right guy. Yeah, yeah. That, that right makes guy. me smile because, <laughs> actually, prob- I would probably say it's been about a year and a year and a half, maybe two years, that I've started trying to actually, like, implement a real morning routine um, because I just graduated college, and, and so, like, I'm getting into trying to fight full-time and compete in... Wow. In... What's up? Oh, yeah. And, and compete in, 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 in jujitsu jitsu and, and all that kind of stuff, and uh, I started doing this thing to where I'll wake up and I'll go outside to to get like sunlight or whatever while I read like some meditations, maybe like some stoicism. Like right now I'm reading a book called The Daily Stoic. And uh, and that's been really, it's just like a one page a day read that you will read and it'll give you something by Marcus Aurelius or Seneca or something like that. Um, some nice. philosophy to, I guess, like help like get your mind right and stuff like that. Uh, and then I've also been trying to stay off my phone for the first 30 minutes because <laughs> it scrambles your brain. It gets it all cluttered and stuff yes. like that. Yes. Um, but that's that's another thing I wanted to ask. Do you like to read at all? I do. Yeah, I love reading um, when I have time for it. It's hard. I like the mm-hmm. what you just said, like the book that you're reading, how you can just read a page a day. Like I like to mm-hmm. read um and like little blurps to sit down and like read chapter books i just don't have the time for it i'd like to mm-hmm. i just don't have the time to like invest into it so um yeah finding little like the quick meditation books you know or just mm-hmm. like little quotes reading those um those are really nice yeah no those are awesome um and so you make your debut uh, going go. going back to your amateur career, right? You make your debut. You ended up winning, <laughs> oh, right? Yeah. You ended up winning. Um, and then you fought again shortly after that. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then you stopped fighting. Yes. Right? What was the reason for that yeah. break? I believe you took like five years off, right? Yeah. Yep, I did. Um, I, <laughs> I, I typically try to... Um, not get too personal with this, but you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead. Go ahead, do your thing. We family. We family. We family. Come on now. Come on now. I had a pretty big scumbag of a head coach, um, and he was grooming me. So I stepped away. Um, I had got married during that time and uh, had a kid, and so I just focused on being a mom and uh, did my own training at my own house because I felt like I trusted a coach um who did me very wrong uh and for me i just needed to seclude myself and mentally process all that and um that's that was the reason for the layoff was Mm -hmm. you know the the coach that i had was did some very inappropriate things so yeah sorry to hear that yeah yeah 
I mean, I, it's taken me, um, a real long time to be able to like publicly talk about it and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm very fortunate and happy that I'm at this point in my life that I can open up and talk about it and, uh, not really hold back on it anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, that's amazing that you could talk about it. And I feel like that's actually very inspirational for a lot of people because a lot of people go through the same thing. I feel like, Mm -hmm. and, and like you said, they don't feel comfortable talking about things like that. And, uh, yeah, that's really awesome that you shared that. I'm happy you did that. Um, during this time, though, this five years off, were you still thinking about fighting? I know you said you were training at your your home gym and stuff like that. You were still thinking about fighting, and what made you get back into a gym, and how did you end up finding the gym that you did? Yeah, so I, I was just at home, like, doing basically self-taught type video things, mm-hmm. um, working out constantly and that motivation to just continue to be an athlete was still there. So, uh, my husband at the time, um, he was in the Marine Corps. So we -hmm. lived down in North Carolina and then he wanted to get out of the Marine Corps. And during that transition, he was dealing with a lot of mental things himself. Um, wasn't in a real good place. And, uh, my older sister who, was married well she's still married to a guy that um i i look at the example of her life and i don't i don't want to ever be in the shoes that she's been put in um because her husband's treated her very awful so um i just i told my ex-husband i said hey i'm gonna start training i know this is gonna help me um you need to figure out your mental stuff and then we ended up separating um when i started training again because he didn't support me uh fighting or anything like that so Mm -hmm. um once i got back into training our you know we tried to make things work we we went through counseling and things like that Mm -hmm. we were we started dating back in the seventh grade. Uh, it was wow. just something that it was time to cut ties. Um, mm-hmm. And so that was kind of when I really started picking up steam with MMA. Uh, when I found Fightopia um, mm-hmm. and really started actually learning how to actually put everything together and fight and not just be a brawler, crazy person. And, and <laughs> you know? so, um, yeah, it was, it was really a big transition but uh, it was all very very worth it <laughs> and uh fightopia that's out of hawaii i mean uh ohio yes yes i wish it was out of hawaii you know matter of fact i think on the last episode me and terrence were talking about uh last days like if it was the last day you could ever live like what would you do i was talking about uh training ju- training jujitsu like on the beach or in the maldives yeah. or something like that like is it on the last nice. on the last day of the universe? On would you be doing jujitsu in Hawaii? Would you be doing? Yes. That, wow. That sounds like a plan. That's what I'm saying. What would, I'm what not here. I can't even. I can't legally say what I'd be doing on the last day. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't say it. I can't say it. Oh, You're a character. You're a character. So, uh, would you say you found uh, Fightopia, like, three years into that layoff? Um, I would have, it would have been, yeah, three and a half, four years, I think. Because I, I trained there for a little while before i actually got back to competing mm, okay wow all right, that's cool can i ask you something mm-hmm. yeah for sure i've i've listened to your story do you believe everything happens for a reason at 100 percent, yeah it's, it sounds like everything led you here <laughs> yeah everything it, it is it's the craziest like wow yeah surreal feeling because yeah 100 percent. it has definitely been everything that I went through, I'm like, wow, I, I see the purpose now. You know, mm-hmm. there were definitely times where it was just like, can I get kicked anymore while I'm down? You know, like, it was it was rough Man. pulling myself out of those spots. But now looking back, I'm like, wow, I understand why I went through everything that I went through. And yeah, yeah, just That's the, strong. the strong. example that I can be for other young women and athletes in the sport do you believe do you believe in in god or do you just believe that um i guess life is throwing you things because you can handle them 
Um, I guess kind of sort of both. I kind of am mm. like a, I try to live in like the gray. I, mm. I try not to go like I used to be a very black and white person. So mm. that's something that I've really tried to, um, you know, everyone has their their own, you know, thoughts and opinions. And I never want to offend anyone off of mm. like my beliefs or anything. So um, I feel like, you know, whatever you want to call it, whether you want to call it God or whoever, um, I think there definitely is a higher power that has put, you know, these things in my way for me to overcome, to be able to say, hey, you know, like, you you can do this. You can, you know, put your, put your, you know, mind to it and accomplish what you want to accomplish. And that Absolutely. you could be the person that you are meant to be, right? Yeah. And with that being said, so you ended up having a very extensive and successful amateur career, right? Mm -hmm. You ended up going seven and one mm. and yeah one loss was by split yeah. decision so it really could have yeah. went either way mm. right yeah. how was your time and experience in the amateurs um back when i was in the amateur ranks it was tough to find fights so it was a lot of like i would i i was in fight camp like all the time um i basically lived in fight camp because you just had to be ready for you know whatever would pop up um because they were so few and far between so i felt like uh it took forever getting through the amateur ranks um and then right at the end it was like i was right there on the verge of like do i make that change over to pro or do i take another amateur fight but we were just having such difficult time finding people to actually fight me so i made the change over to pro and it was looking back, I feel like maybe I made the change a little too soon, but you know, it was, it was what I had to do at that time. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it's hard to get fights. And were you only looking for fights in Ohio or were you also looking uh, out, out of state as well? Yeah, I actually, um, I can't remember my last fight in Ohio. Uh, it was, well, my last fight was just this past August in ohio but before then i hadn't fought in an ohio in eight years um wow. so yeah. at, that was late in my amateur career i couldn't get anyone to come to ohio to fight me so i had to start traveling out of state to find fights which was okay and got mm -hmm. me you know kind of prepared for that professional switch over of traveling while you're having to cut weight things right. like that so it was uh kind of a blessing in disguise but i was I was pretty upset that I didn't get to fight, you know, in my home state anymore. Um, Have that but, home yeah. home crowd support. Yeah. Yeah. Family. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, so then you turned pro, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you have your pro debut. You said you had a little bit of animosity going into that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. There was some social media beef with that one. Okay, because, uh, yeah, I heard you talk about it in another interview that um, you, you're you big on respect. And, and yeah. I guess in that sense, you are a martial artist, right? Not just a fighter, yeah. right? Yeah, um, but then there's some people who, who don't have respect for the sport. Like, if you, uh, are you a fan of the sport at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Like, uh, you know about Hamza Chemaev and, mm. and uh, all these, like, bigger up-and-coming people, like, in the UFC and stuff like that. Um and how, like, uh, you know, sometimes it's a little bit disrespectful like, when people don't make weight or or oh, yeah. or maybe don't even shake your hand. I mean, some people are okay with it. Other people <laughs> have problems with it. Uh, how did you deal with that? Um, well, I got disqualified for kicking her in the head. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> went to social media and talked so much trash and mm. I get it it's social media we're trying to sell the fight you can say whatever you want she was big on like the body shaming which I mm. really um mm. a lot of my family struggles with obesity so like I don't take that lightly like to mm. shame someone on their body it's not cool in my you know like the way that I've been raised um so mm. she was like poking at that whatever and which I could you're selling the fight. Cool. You're getting us attention. I was cool with it, whatever. Um, but at weigh-ins, I tried to shake her hand 
and there were no cameras, you know, it was just all of us fighters around. And she looked at me and said, no, nah, I'm good on all that and wouldn't shake my hand. And it just flipped a switch in me that I was like, well, you got to get in the cage with me. You know what time it is. Now I got to be there. You know what time it is. You know what time it is. We got to set it you know, is. Uh, it was, it was a good, um, good fight, you know, but Ooh. that third round, I, I said I was going to knock her out, which I did, you know, and. At the end of the day, like she, <laughs> she, uh, she tried to say that it was malicious, which I mean, yeah, I was trying to knock her out. But at the end of the day, like I had been throwing that head kick. You got, you know, when a fighter stands up and you throw the head kick at him. Um, mm, right. So that's what I was doing. And I threw the head kick. She sat back down. It connected and it knocked her out. So, um, mm. She, she, her and her coaches tried to say that it was malicious. They got my license suspended. Like it was a whole big, Whoa. whole big thing. Yeah. There was a lawsuit over it. Like, wow. it was a mess. Yeah. yeah. That's, so. that's, that's wild because, uh, you know, while it went on a loss as a loss on your record, maybe because it's we're in the U.S. over in one championship, that would, you would, we would exactly. that's yeah. a win. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, yeah. So I guess technically you'd be uh, three and two, right? Winner. <laughs> that, that's your that's your pro record. Um, and then so after that fight, um, you had a, another fight for King of the Cage, right? Yes. Tell us yes. a little bit about that, and uh, I guess your mindset going into that one, being that it's your second fight, you're coming off of a disqualification. You said they suspended your license. Yeah. Um. So they were it wasn't like my national license. So it was just there in Michigan that they were trying to suspend me and everything, um, which King of the Cage said they would take care of it, um, which they didn't. So um, it was what it was. But uh, yeah, I going into my second professional fight, um, I started working with a nutritionist um, at that time and had a horrible weight cut because the nutritionist that I was working with was like a bodybuilder. So they wow. didn't quite understand like fighting type cuts. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a really rough time cutting weight uh, for that fight. I almost missed weight. Like that was the first time that I ever had to like strip all the way down to be weighed in. And I made 116 right on the dot. Um, but I felt like shit. Like, going into that fight, I knew, like, I had to finish that in the first round or I was going to get smoked that, you know, after yeah. I had one round in me. So, yeah. um, fortunately, I was able to, you know, stick to the game plan. We had a really good game plan. The girl was literally six foot tall. Um, wow. And, yeah, yeah, she was a string green bean, though. <laughs> pounds, you know, being six foot, 115 pounds, there was nothing to her. So, that's crazy. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it really was. Yeah. So um, I got that finished in, in the first round. And, you know, thank goodness for that because <laughs> I even didn't have we, anything else left in me. <laughs> <laughs> even though you finished it in the first round, you said you could still feel the effects of the weight cut? Yeah. And what, what were those effects, if you could elaborate? Uh, just fatigued. My legs felt super heavy. My hands, like everything just felt like cement. You know, I couldn't, mm. I couldn't move the way that, you know, I usually was able to. Um, mm. So, yeah, it was, it was rough. <laughs> did, did you end up putting uh, on the weight correctly or do you think it was the way you, you went down to the weight? I think it was the way that I went down to the weight. Mm. Um, I don't think it was like my rehydration process or anything. Um, it, it was more of how how i went down to make the cut um mm -hmm. that affected it more so than anything okay okay well that's interesting um yeah so you got the win on that hardest weight cut of your life yeah. you got the win um yeah. <laughs> and then they had you fighting for the title against uh yeah. cynthia arceo and uh yes. how was preparations for that Amazing. I had a great fight camp for that. Um, I, everything was like super on point. I had, uh, Jan Finney that I was training with Tim Fry. They were, they gave me amazing looks for the whole fight camp. Um, and I was, 
I felt like I was more than ready. It was definitely a step up in competition um, mm -hmm. where she was versus where I was. Um, but I did really well. If if you ever get time to watch that fight, it's a really good fight. Check it out. We just we actually just came from watching it. You almost had the arm bar in the first round. It was in. It was in. It was in. Her arm it was, was in. It was popping. It was in. It what? Yeah, and then she still fought me for another twenty minutes. She uh, went to the hospital afterwards, uh, like and was in a, no, cause look, cause a I, mobilizer. I thought, I thought she got it out, but he's like, "No, it's deep." Yeah, I'm like, cause hey. you went belly down on it, and that makes it. It was that deep. makes it worse. It was deep. No, yeah. it popped. But the girl that I had fought right before, I blew her elbow out the other side. It was uh, dislocated. And oh, so I didn't want to do that again. I was like, she's going to tap, you know, whatever. <laughs> and then I was like a smart ass and went to, sw you know, switch to the other arm. Mm -hmm. And she jerked right out and then fought me for another 20 minutes. And I was like, oh, my gosh. You know, <laughs> so I took that uh, as a very big note. Like, I will never let go of an arm. Another, and mm -hmm. no other female better give me their arm because I'm yeah, yeah. and I'm not going to feel bad about it. It Taking cost it me a world title. Damn, yeah, that was a world yeah. title for uh, King of the Cage, right? Yeah. You know, funny thing enough, my amateur debut, a very similar thing happened. I had the guy in a triangle. Uh, he ended up stepping over, so I switched it to an armbar, tight armbar like that. Oh, yeah. And and he just he just didn't tap. And I was used to people tapping in the gym because you'll put it on them in the gym, wow. and that's where you get that confidence to go after it, right? Mm -hmm. And then yeah. they they don't end up tapping, and they end up just fighting for the rest of the the yeah. the fight. You gotta break it off. Yes. Break <laughs> it, break it like, off. Just snap it. Snap it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. love. I love you. I love you. Not right now though. <laughs> I'm, I'm breaking it. Yeah, off. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. what you got to do. Yeah. So uh, after that fight, right, you took another uh, another layoff, right? Yep. You mm -hmm. had another time off. And I know you said that that loss was kind of hard on you because it was for a title, right? Um, you felt like you prepared adequately. And then th you have a close fight with a girl and it didn't go your way, right? Um what was your mindset during that layoff and how did it lead in five years later uh, coming back into coming back? There was definitely dark places during those five years. It was, it was rough. Um, I, uh, it was a rough time. I knew I wanted to have another kid. So, and mm -hmm. I love being a mom. So mm -hmm. I thought to myself, you know what? I need to take a break from MMA because I just felt, um, I was hurt, you know, and I couldn't mentally deal with the loss. Um, I look back and I, I realize now that I was really good and I didn't realize how good mm -hmm. I was. Um, and I, I was just embarrassed by the loss, you know, so many things. And then, like I said, I was dealing with the, um, the from my pro debut that suspension all that legal no. stuff was going on um i had drama going on in my personal life with my ex and things like that that it was just a messy time in life that mm -hmm. i just needed to focus on getting my life together honestly and um not on fighting i was focused so hard on you know fighting just because i loved it not because i was trying to like get to the ufc or do anything like that i just loved fighting you know it kept my mental um in check and then that loss just crushed me it absolutely devastated me and i could not rebound from it so um i just took time to focus on being a mom and like I said, getting my home life right. Uh, and then my husband, he was is a football coach. So mm -hmm. he was coaching football. Um, dang, and wow. I was like, dang, like, yeah. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to hop in and start doing the drills with the guys. And hey. um, I started doing it. And I loved, like, I loved learning it and doing all the drills. We kind of, like, joked of me joining a female football team. Oh. But, yeah, but there was nothing yeah. like the closest one was like four hours from us. So mm -hmm. obviously with a family that wasn't doable. 
So then it was like, okay, we still had our home gym that we were training out of. And it was just, it was time to get back to punching people in the face. Cause that's what I really love to do. <laughs> That's what's up. What position would you would you think about playing if you did run play? Back. Running back. I knew it. I knew it. I knew, I knew she was gonna say it. I knew it. I knew she was gonna say it. She's gonna run through a brick wall. She'll run right through it. I'm gonna run right through. I said. I said. I was saying it with you. Running back. I was saying. I was saying it right with you. Yeah. Run right through. Yeah. Right through. Yeah. Right through. Yeah. Right through. I didn't get the nickname Tiny Tank for no reason. Hey, tell him. Talk to him. <laughs> so you oh. you end up making your comeback. First off. You you made a comeback at this is at flyweight or at bantamweight? Yeah, mm. at yeah flyweight. Flyweight against a girl twice your size. It looks yeah. like um, yeah. Aline Aline Pereira. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, that's Alex Pereira's sister. Yeah, fights just like her, doesn't she? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, wow. yeah, it was wild. <laughs> that's so that's crazy. What was your mindset going into that fight? Um, I, so we had actually just started our own promotion. Um, it's called Ego Fight Series. And we were getting ready to do a pro-am show. And I was supposed to headline that show, that fight show. Um, and then I got a call, uh, saying, hey, LFA wants you to fight Eleni Pereira. And it was literally the day before our fight show that we were supposed to have. And we hadn't secured an opponent yet. We've been through this with Ohio's mm -hmm. MMA scene mm -hmm. of like girls just back out, back out, back out. And I'm like, man, you know what? Like, that's a big name. It was just it, really it was the name. Like, we can't mm -hmm. turn that down, you know, yeah. coming off of a five year layoff. Like, that's a win win for me. If I go in and smash her, it looks awesome. If I go in and lose, I still look like a rock star, you know, like I yeah, took five years awesome. off. And I come back to fight at a heavier weight class girl that's massive, and it's Alex Pereira's younger sister. Like, <laughs> it was a win win all the way it's around. Wild. So, um, mindset wise, though, I definitely was not focused in how I should have been. Um, mm. because I'm, I was just busy putting together, you know, a, our new promotion, our gym, mm. you know, running that, thinking getting other fighters ready for their MMA fights. Um, so the focus really wasn't on me. Um, but I really thought it was going to be, I didn't think it was going to be an easy fight. I knew Eleni was very tough. Um, mm. But I thought as soon as I got her to the ground, it was going to be short work because mm -hmm. she doesn't really have a ground game. Right, so, right. She came from a kickboxing background, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, you know, I can, I can strike. I can take, you know, hits it doesn't affect it doesn't bother me not that it doesn't affect me because she definitely hit me in that second round and i was like holy smokes this girl she has what it pop. has it yeah yeah she could have knocked me out had she been mm -hmm. more aggressive i think she could have possibly knocked me out um but at the same time when you aggress me i'm just gonna take you down yep. right yep. right yep. right yeah right. Yep. Mm -hmm. right you could tell she was being very cautious like coming forward she wasn't really yeah. like running into any combination mm -hmm. she was sitting yeah. back just Staying trying to back. Kind of, like poke at mm -hmm. you and use her 18 inch reach advantage yeah. that she had over you so yeah yeah, her and her coaches really game planned very well for me. So, and like I said, just my mindset, I was just enjoying the moment. I I enjoyed the fight. Um, it's my favorite fight to this day. You know, like I, I really loved, wow, cool. you know, getting to share the cage with her. She was awesome. Her team was awesome. Um, so, yeah, I, I just know mindset wise, I wasn't focused in the way that I should have been. Um, yeah, you know, I didn't really cut weight which is definitely a thing for me. Like it helps me get in the mindset to really want to hurt someone mm -hmm. when I got a cut, you know, and Man. fighting at mm -hmm. 125, I didn't have to cut. So I was just <laughs> like, oh, whatever, I'm happy. happy. I get to <laughs> right, right. So uh, you man that's so many that's so many like new things at once i feel like you're coming off of a five-year yeah. layoff yeah. you're you're running this promotion you're now running a gym as well right yeah. um a mom. and then you're in a yeah. a new okay. weight class going against a new world fighter right yeah and wow. you get all these new things all in one experience you felt like maybe you learned the most from that fight or oh, yeah. is there a fight you could point to to where you did learn the most you feel like 
No, I think that was that was the one. I definitely learned 100% the most out of that fight, for sure. Mm -hmm. You think you learned the most about yourself? Yeah. Uh... Yeah, big time. Yep, it showed me just, you know, that there's no quit. You know, she drilled me with, like, the hardest knee. I, I was wobbled, you know, like, it I felt it. And I just shook it off. I, I stood in there, smiled about it, and still kept one. Always smiling. That's what I was about to say. Always oh, smiling. Look, look, we watching. Yeah. We watching. I'm like, I'm like, hey, bro. I think she, I think she loved this. Like, <laughs> he like, he like, what you, he like, what you mean? I'm like, bro. She in there smiling. No, this, <laughs> she, she loved it. Yeah, she she gets hit. She, she loves, smiles. She, she hits you. She smiles. She loves, She's always she smiling. That's this. Sp that's the perfect promotion oh. for the for the smile back of Ken. Oh. Is that why? 100%. Is that why y'all y'all changed the name to Smile Back? Yeah, that that's a lot of it. Um, yeah, because my personality, I just I love to smile. So um, you have an amazing smile, by the way. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that that definitely carries the the representation of Smile Back. It has a lot to do with just. Just my personality of, um, you know, I, I do like to smile a lot. And then like I kind of talked about earlier, just my story of, man, I've been in some really low spots. And the way that I've found is just, hey, I'll smile back about it. You know, like, yeah. I'm just going to smile at you and you don't like it. You know, like, you can fight me about it. Hey, that's tough. Yeah. That's tough. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> that's so tough. So following this fight, you then you come back, you make your comeback in a different promotion. This isn't the LFA, right? Mm -hmm. This is uh, Renegade, right? Renegade Rumble. Yep. And uh, this is actually on the same card as, I believe, your teammate, Dylan Bucca, right? Dylan Bucca, yeah. He's a, he's a training partner. He's like my brother, man. Like, honestly, mm. we're like brother and sister. Um, so we don't train at the same gym, but we, like, cross-train all the time together. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. How'd y'all meet? Um, oh, how we've... He, during my, my time off, um, he started his, like, own boxing promotion, and we put a few boxers on there. So we kind of met through through that um his oh, okay. his head coach actually cornered me for my first two fights he wasn't mm. uh gary he's not he wasn't my coach back in the day but he helped he was involved a little bit with the gym that i was at um so i've known gary forever he's always like done right by me um so now uh, gary kind of connected us um and yeah. there's there's a lot of chemistry between dylan and i it's like i said he's like my little brother my little big brother he's younger than what <laughs> hey, i am but that's, he's that's big. And, and congrats to him by the way on on getting the contract that's yeah. that's amazing yeah he for stepped sure. in on short notice for the contender mm -hmm. series and got a win over a really good guy and yeah. that's not easy so congrats yeah. to him on that but yeah. you ended up winning on Rene Renegade Rumble 6, and you won in dominant fashion by unanimous decision, mm. right? Yeah. And yeah. what did you learn from having that specific opponent, fighting that style? Um, yeah. Because she was also bigger than you, right? This was also at yeah. flyweight, right? Um, yeah. You didn't have to cut weight again, but was your diet better? Um. Yeah, I would... Honestly, probably not. My diet wasn't great. Um, she... So the fight was originally supposed to be at 125. Um, I was cutting the two pounds that I had to cut, you know, to get to 25. And she called uh, Thursday saying she wasn't going to make weight. We needed to do a catch weight at 130. Then she came in, uh, was super late to weigh in. So we were oh. nervous that she wasn't even going to show up. Um, yeah. Showed up at... She was 133 and a half <laughs> and I weighed in at like 127 wow. something. Um, but we knew like skill wise, my skills were better than hers. So mm -hmm. we just said, we'll still take the fight. We didn't make her cut anymore or anything. Yeah. So, and like I said, I, it was back here in Ohio. So it had been eight years, you know, all my fans were ready to watch me smash someone. So <laughs> I knew, I knew the weight was not going to make it easy. Like I wasn't most likely going to be able to finish her, but um, mm. I was still able to put on a very dominant performance. 
uh, she was a southpaw. So that was fun, like getting oh, to right. just dismantle a southpaw <laughs> on the that. side. I, so, the, the I hate him. I hate him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So okay, well that's 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 awesome. So you had your homecoming. Um, yeah. You're about five foot fighting six foot girls, uh, yeah. double your size. But also, you've talked about you're moving back down, right, to yeah. straw weight um, yeah. at one fifteen, and you plan on fighting soon. Do you have a fight date yet? Yeah. Um, so I was supposed to fight uh, January what January twelfth for LFA. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've already had two opponents ghost us. So, you know, oh, people, yeah. people like uh, to talk no. that life and, and say that they want to be a fighter. But apparently when my name come, comes across, you know, they, Dang, they aren't about that life. <laughs> so, yeah, dude, tiny tape. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I don't think I'm, I'm still being ready for January 12th, mm. but I, I kind of, have a feeling I'm not going to end up fighting January 12th, but, uh, Gary's helping me get a fight. Um, for, I think he said February 9th, it'll be in Pennsylvania, I believe. So, um, for another bigger promotion. So it'll be on UFC fight pass and things like that. Hey, Hey, you know, we're going to tune in. You already know we're going to tune in. You already know. You already know. know. So (laughs) you have your upcoming opponent, um, what about any any short term goals as we're nearing the end of this mm-hmm. this interview because we know you're a very busy woman <laughs> you've given us plenty of time already. What are some of your goals uh, in the near future? Um, so we're actually getting ready to open up a mega gym. Um, wow. we're gonna have our competition cage in there, a competition boxing ring, um, like triple the amount of mats and bags that we have right now. Right now, our gym's a little small, so uh, February 1st, that new gym's gonna be open. So, we're kind of like wow. cramming, we're super busy with that right now. Um, so that's a massive goal that's gonna be you know coming to li- it's all coming to life right now. Um, and then I am trying to get another two to three fights in before June. Uh, Mm -hmm. in June, we're having a really big fight show here in Ohio and we're trying to kind of do exactly what Dylan did with, um, you know, he fought up there on the same card that I did, had an Mm -hmm. excellent showing and Mm -hmm. then right off to the UFC, you know, he got called for the UFC. So, um, that's what we're shooting for. You know, the next six months is going to be packed full of me competing, um, I know in March I'm supposed to be uh, doing a kickboxing um, title fight, so that'll be fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I'm going to be busy, 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 getting as many fights as I can, and then um, hopefully we'll be getting the call, you know, late June, early July for the UFC. So you you like competing in kickboxing and MMA, like just back to back to back? Yeah, I mean, the kickboxing isn't... MMA, like you can get away with competing and you know like grappling kickboxing boxing um mm-hmm. and being very active with it because you don't take the damage um like you do in mma with mma it's like hey you can only do so so many you know fights Training before camps. you're yeah before you're like really messing mm-hmm. yourself up so mm-hmm. i like to you know have little things in there you know like a kickboxing match or something you know that's that just keeps me busy without having to worry about you know getting super hurt in a fight all right and uh speaking about getting hurt uh do you have uh maybe a biggest what what was the hardest moment in your your martial arts career would you would you say Uh, that would have been when i tore my bicep and labrum Mm -hmm. i uh had that happen like two weeks before a my one of my amateur title fights and um i'm too stubborn to pull out of a fight <laughs> so oh, i didn't pull out i went i before? fought uh, yeah yeah <laughs> again yeah. skill level wise like i knew i could smash the girl so we took the fight, I smashed her, and it was, it was. <laughs> you're a monster wow. you're a monster yeah. you're a monster how how was he dealing with that though one arm and labrum's then, hurt and then we're recovering yeah mm-hmm. it, it was yeah. um 
it wasn't that it was hurting me that much. I mean, it, it didn't feel good. Um, mm -hmm. but it was, uh, just the mental aspect of knowing that I didn't have power on my right hand. You mm -hmm. know, I was throwing my right hand and I just knew it wasn't as powerful as what it usually was. So, um, that sucked, but you know, like I said, it was okay. I still got the finish and, but the, the having the surgery and having to recover and then right after the surgery, I had to defend my title, you know? So oh. it was like, crap, like a lot oh. of mental, I did a lot of reading during that time <laughs> <laughs> and just trying to keep my mental, you know, sound. So mm -hmm. nice. That's, yeah. that's, that's dope. Uh, that's, First off, crazy that you even went through that. Nobody yeah. knows what fighters go through. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this no. is this is the hardest career, if you you want to call it that. The hardest sport, if you want to call it that. The fight game is yeah. is ruthless and unforgiving. Tough and, business. Uh, yeah. This this yeah. is another example of of why. Um, but you know, you're known as uh, as many things, right? You're you're a mom. You yeah. are a fighter, the tiny tank. Um, <laughs> You're a champion in your own right, right? A uh, gym owner, promotion uh, president or CEO, if you will. When it's all said and done, right? Uh, and I know it's hard to think about the end when you're just getting started, right? But when it's all said and done, how would you want Chelsea Connor, the fighter and the person, to be remembered? Would you want them to be remembered individually or as one? I think it, I'll be remembered as one. I, I don't think even like without fighting, um, I think people look at me and they see just the the struggles and things that I've went through and it has fighter written all over it, whether I'm doing it with my fist and in the cage or just living life and fighting the fight, you know, like mm -hmm. um, that I'm going to be, you know, known as that so definitely it'll it'll go hand in hand and i'm i'm super grateful to have all the opportunities that i've had to be able to inspire others and just be that kind of role model for for others to look up to man that's awesome chelsea you have amazing energy it was wonderful talking to you i'm sorry we took up so much of your time but i'm glad but we're You're super cool. <laughs> you are super amazing yeah. super amazing we're grateful that you gave us this time and opportunity to speak with you today um if you have your social media handles mm -hmm. uh how, how would people be able to get in touch with you um my instagram is chelsea connor mma and then my uh, Facebook, I just use my personal page. I have a, a fan page, um, but I've kind of put that on the back burner. So you can add me as a friend on Facebook. It's uh, just Chelsea Connor. Chelsea Connor. Uh, yep. Guys, we'll put the links in the description down below. Um, but with that being said, Chelsea, thank you for your time. You're a pleasure to talk thank to. You. Thank <laughs> you. Have a good one. Thank you. You too. When you learn how to talk like that, what do you mean? Bro, you sound like you you was like on the news. I was so proud, bro. Yeah, I, was, I don't know, man. Where did that come from, First bro? Time. First time, dog. That's... Bro, My, you. Can we, can we talk about this real quick? I yeah. almost cried for a little bit, dog. That was crazy. Bro, you ran that, bro. I was, I'm like, I looked at you like, bro, what is you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what is you talking about? Where did you get this shit from? <laughs> uh, bro, she's dope. She cool as hell. She's dope. Bro, that was cool. I didn't get a chance, bro. We. They get that gym. We need to go to Ohio. Yeah, no, nah, that. Yeah, that'd be. Bro, that'd she's be cool, cool as shit, bro. No, I'm talking about yeah. like, she'd be a cool ass mom. I ain't gonna hold you. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, cool as hell. Though. And you know, she cool has the hell. right mindset. Like everything she's been through, everything you know, just living the martial artist lifestyle as well. Uh, having a gym, man, all, dealing with all these different things. Like if you could juggle things like that, bro, you know how hard it is to you overcome. Know. People fold every day, dog. So when you see people that jump over a hurdle and keep going, that's somebody different. Oh, no, oh, man. Yeah. No, but you, we I wish we got to ask her about her family. Yeah. And that's where she got that that's where she got that strength from. I wish. It don't come from nowhere. <laughs> yeah. It don't come, no, you can't do this by yourself. Yeah. I, you can't you can't do it by yourself. I couldn't. Right. I know she can't. She's a strong she's ain't nothing but five foot tiny tank. But she's probably stronger than a lot of people I know. She's the smallest.
Tiny that's tank. crazy. Tiny tank. That's that a perfect, is crazy. That's a, that's a perfect name. Yeah, I wish we got we got more time. I just don't want to take up too much of her time because I know she, she has. Was, a, she was, she, she, she wanted to talk. A, she has a gym to I run. She wanted to talk. Yeah, no, nah, she, she want to talk. I know she wanted to talk. She wanted to talk. She wanted to talk. <laughs> want to talk. Want yeah, no, nah, she was she was very lenient with her. But time, did you see bro. your face when you was giving her the uh the stuff? She was like, "Wow, he noticed." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nah. It's, yeah. I feel like a lot of like MMA, like people who interview people, like don't actually do it themselves, right? They're fans of the sport and stuff like that. And they yeah. want to know what's next or you know how you got to where you got to. But yeah, I just feel like we could we could talk about it a little bit more just because you know we're Bro. actually doing it and we're in it. You know, it's different hearing from another fighter or another martial artist or another person aspiring to be just like you, right? Um, I know what the injury felt like though. The label? label? Yeah, I know exactly. Bro, I, I yeah. just, come on, dog. That's, that's, that's the number one injury you get playing football. Dog. Yeah, that's to throw a Dog, you know what you do when you get a label? When you, to play, they have to strap it to your, uh, like, they have to strap it down right here so it don't move. And she in there throwing it. Oh, what the? <sighs> oh, bro. Dog, dog, it's just, it just, when you I told walk, you, bro, it just that's falls why, out. And that's why you yeah. can't, like, when you're watching a fight and you're watching their performance, like, mm -hmm. UFC 296. Now, yeah, now we're going to get into some UFC 296 because, like, you watch a performance like Kobe, right? Yeah. You have no idea what he's going through. He's not going to say it. He's in character, right? Oh, you think he was hurting? I don't, I don't know. Because it was I weird. It was I don't weird, know if he had fight. I think it was mainly time off, but you also never know what that whole Masvidal situation did to him. No, Connor looked trash when he came back. It was probably time off, bro. Connor, Connor didn't even look that bad when he came, he came Doing back. Doing all this leaning, punching. Superhero fight against against Dustin. Nah, he looked trash. Nah, he looked. He touched Dustin. He touched Dustin like, until Dustin start figuring out punch him. This going this way. <laughs> what are you doing? Anyways, yeah, bro. Back to yeah. But yeah, so yeah. like, I mean, you never. He got snuck by like from the back. He got snuck. Yeah, Masvidal ran up on him. Snuck him. You don't remember? Bare up. Dropped him. In a ski mask. You a lion. No, you got to put this on clip. No, no, you got to no, clip this, dog. No, seriously. He knocked him out, bro. You're lying. I think he chipped a tooth. Uh, he was claiming that he had brain damage or whatever, at least for court or whatever. I'm not sure what happened to the lawsuits. That's probably that, why he's saying all that, that crazy shit. And anything. No, he was saying that before the brain damage. Make America great again. He's tripping. He's just tripping. I thought America was cool. I mean, first off, okay. As a matter of fact, now that we're talking about UFC 296, yeah. now that we're talking <laughs> about this, so you cool, never bro. know what fighters are going through. Yeah. But <laughs> this nigga was was he, was he tripping? Was he tripping or willing, bro? Smack the piss out of his ass. They should have. They should have. That should have been another fight right after that. Dog, somebody need to hit him. That's. I see why somebody snuck him with a ski mask on. I would have <laughs> did the same shit. You gotta have repercussions, bro. Yeah, I feel like he's he's an inspiration to like people. Like people like people like him, right? Who? And they say, oh, Kobe, and they say. Oh, it's it's uh you know he's just in character. He doesn't you know he's doing this for for pay per view buys. You should be happy. He's he's selling the fight. That's all bullshit to me. That's all bullshit to me because if you can even say that, like if you could be okay with yourself saying that, it's not just the character. There's there's it's morality. There's morality in there. And he's talking about oh I'm just saying the truth. What about uh everything Leon's dad did like. He said that shit, but I don't even know why people are surprised because he didn't just say that about Leon's dad. He said about Kamaru's dad. Yeah, I, don't, I guess we all forgot about that. This dude is, he's an inspiration for scumbags, in my opinion. You know, people, people who are who are scumbags and don't want to be seen as that, who are scumbags on the inside, but then they don't want to be seen like that. Those are the people who are saying what he did is okay. I want to tell you those group of people, but I don't want to say it out loud. They know who they are. If oh. they, and if they're listening to this, they also know who they are. No. So, I mean, <clears throat> now he's a great fighter in the past Nicole. and all that. Didn't think he deserved this title shot, but whatever it got made, Leon just dominated him from the jump. I think the speed is what kind of got to him. I think like him showing that the speed and also the stance switches. Because keep in mind, he came he came out orthodox. He was a better for the, athlete. For the whole first round, he yeah, went he was, orthodox. Yeah. The whole second round. He went southpaw and was switching. That's weird, bro. That's two feel out rounds that Kobe has to do now to find his entries without getting kneed or kicked in the head. From both sides. Yeah, no, he got out athletic athleticism. I just think Leon was just better. He a better man. Just no, he's no, better. he's athletically better than him. Ath and athletically, technically. He's dog, he, he took, took him down. down. He took dog, him down. Can't make this. Man, just to prove a point. What do we talk about? What do we talk about? What do we talk just about? Just to prove a point. What do we talk about? 
I'm gonna come beat you at your own shit. I'm a, I'm a better man, dog. I'm just a better man, bro. Kobe, that's so loud. Took him down. Beats him really up. struggled to take him down, but took him down. And then Leon got up. He said, "Fuck that." Shot. Bro, Islam may have to fight, bro. He they, has to. Dana said. Dana already said that it's he's bullshit. that he's not. He's he's not gonna go up to well to wait. Not bullshit. yet. Not yet. Just because he he's trying to run from Charles and engage him. Because Charles like cold. Yeah, he why? big as hell. I gotta fight him again. No, Charles is big. Like I gotta fight him again because you know Charles fights. Big as hell. Like it's a different fight. It's a different. It's gonna be a different fight every time. Just like Volk and, and Islam was a different fight when they rematched. Now short notice, whatever, but it was a different fight. The first fight rematched. was crazy. The second fight. Wow. The second fight is never the same, bro. It's never. It's no, never Charles gonna Charles can hit. I don't know. His chin was just. I, it was, it was his chin. approach. Fuck the chin. It was the approach. If you can hit in midair like that, throwing a flying knee, you're going to drop. Dumbass. Keep your feet on the ground. Keep your feet on the ground. So, main event, he ended up, Kobe ended up winning the last round, but like. He like won the last up. one? Yeah, then he like. Because he, he laid on there. He laid on there. Yeah, laid and then, and then he tried to celebrate, acting like he won or whatever. Just yeah. in character, but nobody's really fucking with it. Uh, Leon had. If he get beat up again, he gets retired. Leon show proved that they were on two different levels, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, who's next? Oh, who's next for Leon? Yeah. I don't think Shafkat. Shafkat on the same car. He finished Wonder Boy. And he's never been finished without, before. Without really getting touched to the head, which is beautiful. He got hit with some nice body shots. Wonder Boy hit him, and Wonder Boy defended a lot of takedowns. He was Wonder Boy looked really good in that fight. But Shafkat just, just was able better. to minimalize it, get him against the cage, nullify yeah. everything, get him down. Shafkat, he has the skill to be number one contender and, and to fight for the title. I think they're going to try and build him again. I think Bilal's probably next. Bilal was there. Bilal was talking. Dana said, I don't want to talk about it right now. Yeah, Bilal's <laughs> weird, bro. He's Dana said, weird, I don't want to talk about it right now. Don't know why he said that. Just promote the fight, bro. Just say, Bilal, you got it. Let's just have these people fight. Fuck it, bro. Nine fight, eight fight win streak. Like, come on, dog. No, I'm happy for Leon, bro. I'm happy for Leon. I wish, too. I wish too. I wish too. When he talked about his dad, he wouldn't have flinched. He wouldn't, <sighs> I wish he didn't do that. Cause, dog, uh, that's what people want, bro. They just want a reaction. And the way and he, I'm not giving it. And I'm the not, way he stayed composed during the fight. That's where it came out in. He's good people around. Him. It came out in the fight, but before, yeah, no, it came it, out in it the didn't, fight. It didn't come out in the fight. No, I'm saying. No, I'm saying. Him oh, not composure. reacting, yeah. He's him composure. staying because this don't this man don't know me, yeah. Yeah, dog. This dude was just speaking on his mind, dog. This is some some bullshit like little kids do when we young and they and I didn't give him some they shit. He gonna piss you. me up. That's wanna... why your sister fat. Some shit like that, dog. <laughs> what the fuck? What the f- what? No, don't pay attention to this idiot. No. <laughs> yeah, at yeah. first, glad you might want to throw him out. Of at first, but then you go you back realize... and talk to your mom, your brothers about what happened. Who it's like, is Timmy? Man, fuck who is Timmy? Fuck that man. But yeah, as far as who's next, I think Bilal should be next. Um, I think next opponent for Shafkat. Somebody cold. The winner of Ian Gary Vicente Luque. I think that got reset to uh, Sean Strickland's card. I hope Ian Gary wins. I hope he wins. I want to see him get fucked up after that shit we was talking about. You hope damn. he wins? I hope he gets fucked no, up. No, he's going to get beat up by Shafkat. No, no, no. Because look. I hope he, he loses to Luque. If Shafkat. But if he doesn't. Mm-mm, he's not going to lose. If Shafkat beats Ian, he'll leave Oh girl. They're at the same, or they were at the same year. No, the forty-year-old woman. He'll leave her if Shavkat wins, cause he got to focus now. <laughs> he got to focus. You see what I'm saying? He said she was talking about wasn't working no more. Dog, that pissed me off, bro. I went and rewatched that video, dog. I'm looking <laughs> at the screen, bro. I'm looking at the screen like a Paul, like did this just cut off me from the interview? <laughs> what the? What the? Bro, imagine, imagine, imagine if we were we were talking to to Chelsea and, and my old lady just walked. This, oh, hold on, let me interrupt the, this. I almost said it again. <laughs> I almost said it again. No. But yeah, I think I think Shakai and Ian Gary, that's a future that's a future. Shakai and Ian Gary? That's what's gonna happen. That's a future. Ian fight. Gary Cole. I think it's either gonna be the winner of Ian Gary and Luca who fights Shafkai or Why do you think bro got a chance? The other guy. I ain't Luke, got no chance. Bro, Luca is uh elite fighter. I'm not even <clears> talking <throat> to you about this. You really say this casual bro. ass. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. Anyways. Uh, I think it's either going to be the winner of that fight, or you just heard Dan yeah. just set yeah. MVP versus versus, versus uh, Kevin Hahn. Uh, hey man, Kevin Hahn gonna fuck I thought he got signed to the PFL. I don't know what's been going on with him. PFL posting him and stuff. I thought he got signed to the PFL. Kevin Hahn gonna punch on MVP. 
Did you see what happened to him bare knuckle? <laughs> Did you see that? That's only boxing. Did you see that? It's though? so dumb. If you if you judge anything in MMA based off of that fight, which honestly I thought he won before it even went to that last sixth round bullshit. Did you see, did you see the bare knuckle fight? Mike Barry's the goat nah, bare knuckle fight. Nah, nah, Let's get that straight. Nah, but did you see it though? I saw it. What'd you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he got hit, but he also hit. He's fighting with his hands down, bare knuckle. If he's willing to do that, look, he's going he's gonna throw some shit. Kevin Holland gonna fuck over this guy. <sighs> did you see Kevin Holland's last performance? Against uh against Jack Dellow. I didn't look. Jack Dilla also got re- uh, he got scheduled against Gilbert Burns. Burns? Yeah, that's a Gilbert's back? That's a top tier Uh-oh. fight. That's a top tier fight. Gilbert's back. That's a top five fight. Gilbert's back. I fuck with Gilbert. I fuck with him. Mm-hmm. I, I I came up when he uh had that war with uh with uh Hamza. <laughs> yeah, that, just for reference, all the bullshit he says, that's why he says it. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> no, that's not, not for real. He's right. <laughs> no, you ain't come around. I'm tired of people getting on my behind. Like I don't the know. Era. Yeah, bro, you came people, around during the Hamza era. Bro, that's people be in the COVID. comments thinking I care that I'm the problem. I know <laughs> I'm the problem. Y'all don't gotta tell me. I know. Hashtag the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know I'm the issue. I know. <laughs> you know. Right. Yeah. So, uh, Shafkat will either fight the winner of MVP Holland or the winner of Why they giving MVP a shot yeah. when he just got in? The, he getting beat up and bare knuckle and shit. Why he getting... Bro, he first off, stop, <laughs> first off, stop hating. Second off, MVP he could very well beat Kevin Holland. He could be That's, a champion. Like not not like nothing bad on Kevin Holland because I think he's world championship level. I just think MVP's also world championship <laughs> level. I mean, you saw the fight he had with um uh uh who was who was the champ at uh at welterweight uh Lima Douglas Lima. Yeah, yeah, we're almost we're almost done, but. You see the the champ we had, I mean the the fight he had with, with Lima to where he was piecing him up Douglas Lima in Bellator he was the champ uh, Douglas Lima he was piecing him up and then and and one, getting his calf kicked no he got his calf kicked and then as he was getting up got clipped and then the second fight Lima ended up beating him by a close decision but you know I just see when he's he gets, championship level he gets doused okay look he he can when he hits you you may go to bed but when he get hit. His whole body be flailing like an alien, and he be falling and dropping. Really? And he only got knocked out once. What it look like? <laughs> what that shit look? Bah! Oh, his whole body flew over. Damn, bro, he's he's very similar to Talon Chad. In anything he hits, it's gonna break. The dude's skull caved in on that fly knee. He hit a dude with a fly knee, caved in his skull. I'm talking about a dent was in his head. He hit. He leg kicked the guy's kneecap, and it broke. I think that was his like his last performance for Bellator. Bro, if Kevin Holland gets in there and beat the shit out of him, Dana gonna laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Dana gonna we signed this. I don't think that's gonna happen. But Dana, Dana gonna laugh his ass off. So to finish off the the pockets, we gotta finish off the UFC two ninety six. We gotta finish recapping it. Yeah. Um Pantoja versus Roy Val. Technical Hell just massive brilliance. brilliance. Masterclass. Pantoja, man. Do you like him? Roy Val's a problem. See, that's the thing. He's a little fucker. Roy Val, like he would brought a very interesting problem to Alexander Pantoja, and the champ handled it like a champion. At first, he came out trying to scrap with him, like how, how like doing how, that, like how contenders scrap with each other, right? Just fight. But then he fought like a champion. His coaches reminded him. He settled down. He fought like a champion. He ended up taking him down. Just run a beautiful series. Put it on the ground. Put him on the ground. Did you see the way he was passing that guard? Yeah. Like butter. Why does he look so much? Like no, he, I think when he got past Brandon Moreno, because Brandon Moreno was one of them grapplers too. Mm-hmm. Once he got past that shit twice, or was it once? Pantoja's always been a really good grappler. He knew it was over. He's been a black belt forever now. And he's, he's jiu-jitsu is so high level. Like, but it's different though. Like he it can... was butter the way he was passing. Brandon Roy Val has good jiu-jitsu and he was p- passing his guard like butter, wow. mounting him, taking his back. He, maybe he didn't get the finish. Brandon Roy Val's an excellent fighter himself, Raw Dog. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know why I keep calling him Roy Val. What? Wait, what? what you say? His nickname is Raw Dog and that's what I'm going to call him. Don't call him that shit, bro. He a... beat Raw Dog like that. Like, dominant, Raw Dog? Dominant victory. Now, now Roy Val, Raw Dog, he... Uh, Condom man. He started. He started coming in that fifth round. He really started putting it on him. Uh, He started adding up on the strikes because he knew he had to. He had to outpace him, volume, listen to his coaches beautifully, Mm -hmm. and he fought him. But then Roy Val just ended up getting the. He he got hit with something big and took him down. A lot of times he was taking him down was after getting hit by something big. After getting hit, he said, "Fuck that." (laughs) 
Who does he fight next? Dana said maybe the winner of Moreno versus Albazi, but like, he gonna fight Moreno three times when he won twice. I don't think that's the move. I think he's already been talking about Sean O'Malley. He fuck because they sparred Sean. together. Sean says he got the better of him. Pantoja says he got the better of him. Pantoja said release the footage. Release the footage. You know, <laughs> you know how they talk. No, I ain't gonna lie. He'll fuck over Sean because he actually distributes he's the problem. Short. What the fuck does that mean? I'm getting in. You, you know that knee that Roy Val hit him with a couple oh, times? Oh, you and these little bitch ass. No, oh, he's gonna. Okay, okay, he okay, he may hit. Sean O'Malley is six foot. If he hit, what happens bitch, if you miss? See, that's my thing. Yeah, you he, can hit. He can get taken. You can out hit and stuff like that. But if you miss, they spar. That's your ass. They know. They know what each other brings. They what spar. kind of sparring are we talking about? We talking about kickboxing sparring? They went all the way MMA. I mean, Sean said he was like nowhere near in shape, uh, He's a and, fat ass. and that they were just bringing him in as a sparring partner. But then, uh, no, Pantoja, they Pantoja, a champion then, in as a sparring partner. But then Pantoja, he wasn't a champion. It was oh. just way back. But then Pantoja was like, "Nah, let's get another round. Nah, let's get another round." And you know, it kept Hacked going like that. Yeah. You know, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Pantoja looked great. I think he he fights uh, somebody shitty. Man. I guess I guess he could fight them or Moreno needs another shot. Manel Cop. He can fight Manel Cop. Oh, the little ball head uh, black dude. Make some money. Uh, Make some money. It'll be an exciting fight. Is he that Cop, good? Cop is going to talk. Yeah, he's good. Who is he beating though? I need you. Got to have skins Kai. or you have skins, bro. He didn't beat Kai. They didn't fight. Um, I think you got to have skins, bro. He did beat. He did beat little dude. He didn't beat Kai because they didn't fight. Um, they should be rescheduled, to be honest. But he be a really good guy on short notice. Um, Manel Cobb. You gotta have skins fight these dudes, not. Nah, oh, he's fighting Mateus Nicolau. The hell on man? January thirteenth, he's fighting Nicolau. Um, the guy Roy Val just slept to get this title shot. Nicolau was cold, but um, this is last so that's gonna be a good fight, man. See, there's multiple opponents for Pantoja and who he will fight. Um, but moving further down the car, Patty and. And Tony, Jesus Christ. That's a shit show. Didn't I tell you? Tony looked good, though, bro. He looked good. He looked good, and he was moving well, and he was hitting Patty with shots, and then Patty, he rocked him, blew his wad. Um, Tony, <laughs> Tony, couldn't, <laughs> Tony couldn't get up from the grappling. <laughs> he, um, he blew his wad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bro, now all that training with David Goggins, and while Patty was eating burgers with hot Cheetos on him. What it look his like? cardio didn't look bad. It was it was just it was just the fact that he just didn't get up from. Oh, he's old Patty as shit. has good ground game. That's what you didn't know about Patty. Patty has a like that's what he is. He's a ground. He's not a striker. Ever since he came to the UFC, he's been he's been throwing for whatever reason, just hype. He's been, <laughs> he's been throwing, going crazy. And it teed him up. Yeah, it teed him up. <laughs> the crowd, it teed him up, bro. So Molly too. Yeah, he's so he was throwing, but that's what he really does. He he doesn't really lay and pray like that. He was just gassed. But that's that's what he does. I thought it was a it was a good win to have. A boring ass fight. No, it was exciting as fuck at first. At it first. got boring the last couple rounds or whatever. But yeah, I mean Tony, I just feel like the reason people are telling him to retire is so he could be still remembered as Tony because you don't even know him as Tony Ferguson. Mm-hmm. You don't remember him as El Kukui. You remember him as Man, seven had, fight losing streak. Bro, they had they had Patty with them braids, the, the, the hustling flow girl braids. Yeah, he's serious now. He's not. He's not getting out of shape, out of camp. He's he's wearing cornrows and shit. Look like the girl off Hustle and Flow. <laughs> the white girl. It was just like the white girl off Hustle and Flow. I'm like, damn, Patty. Damn. Uh, still keeping prison it, braids. Still keeping his chin up. It was better the chin first like round, this. but once he got tired, chin like this. The chin, yeah. He's what gonna, the fuck? Someone's gonna punch on him. What and, I told you. And he can only go up from here. He's a 55. He's winning. He keeps winning, but he can only go he's up. A 55. From here. Let's name. Let's let's let's. He's name. at RDA. Ooh. He said he said RDA called him out. Drunk? That would be a good fight. That's drunk. I think RDA beats his ass. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What the hell? No, Patty is yeah. drunk. Patty needs to stop watching Gold Member and Austin Powers and shit. That he need to get on his his damn. His yeah. Damn. Put your put your chin down. He'd be cold as hell. He just dropped that motherfucker down yeah. and use his grappling in the beginning, so then you can squabble at the end. Stop right. punching because you think. God you damn think it! You gonna knock this man out? Yeah. Has he even had one of the moments where he dropped somebody like that and they just, just fell over or some crazy shit? I haven't even seen that yet. Yeah. He had that moment? Was he just fucked yeah. over somebody? I think his UFC debut, he's he and fucked over his somebody. first two fights. Yeah, he fucked them over. I see him do have great he's grappling. Slick. He has phenomenal grappling. And that's championship shit. Yeah. Striking cool, but shit, that's how you're gonna last. Yeah, I think I think uh yeah. I don't know if it's the right move to grapple RDA, but I mean that's <laughs> I know, that's a bad that's, idea. That's no. his best uh, he gets best, best chance. He gets fucked over. Yeah. 
maybe he's fighting RDA next, maybe not. Mm. Um, but uh, we already talked about Josh Emmett, Bryce Mitchell. That was yeah. concussive. Um, uh, who Josh Emmett fights next? I don't know, but it has to be up now. He has to be up from here. So maybe another. Why do you go up with Bryce Mitchell? Because Bryce Mitchell was a, is a really good competition. It's short notice, whatever. But or maybe they met, make the rematch with Giga. Yeah. They they might do that. Why don't they just yeah? Well, let's just see what Giga do to it. Because Giga was up there until he got beat by Cater, who was top five at the time. So this is still a a top five <laughs> level fight. I feel like for Emmett. So two wins like that. Damn, one number one contender fight right there, and he could be fighting for the title again. But then we still have to see what happens with Ilya and Volk and stuff like that. See who wins out of them. But you seen Sharkboy and Lava Girl? Remember they used to sing that dream, 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 dream. I ain't watched that. You ain't watched that shit? No. Yeah, that's some. That's a dream. Josh Emmett would never be a contender ever again. Don't listen to him. Uh, Don't listen to him. Uh, um, yeah. respectfully. What? Did we talk about the prelims? Yeah, everybody dropping and shit. They were dropping like yeah, very exciting. Flies but yeah, that's that's UFC two ninety six. Uh, that's the rest of the fights for the year. Um, Episode twenty two. I think I think maybe they have a couple of fight nights or something. Maybe I don't know. If Christmas coming. No, up, you didn't so. hear they got what was it, a fight night in Saudi Arabia next weekend or I think there was one or maybe in two weeks. I think because he be said he said it's not gonna be no regular fight night because they said the, the Saudi Arabian people they be throwing out gold gold bricks. Man. Party favors and shit. So he was like, "We're gonna turn yeah, them yeah, up." Yeah, they don't money. Everyone get paid. There's Facts. gonna be some good people on there mm-hmm. for free too. It's a free card. Mm-hmm. Go to Hooters with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you go to Hooters. Bro. I'm not going to Hooters now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to damn Hooters. Yeah, you are. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, bombshell's expensive. But yeah, two two ninety seven. Drikas and oh yeah, Drikas and, and Sean. They find the crowd. Sean beat his ass low key, but not even low key. He beat his ass. Hey, Drake took him down. He though. saw. That he was saw. Talent. Bro, he saw a kid. Hey, watch out real quick. Oh, <laughs> bro, no, he, Damn. He, started, he started throwing elbows back of the head. Savage. He was trying to kill. Drake he insane. big as hell. Sean Strickland ain't no little dude, bro. He, that's a big ass dude doing that shit. And they with cowboy they boots on. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? Even oh, crazier. Yeah. And we're gonna finish off with this. Hmm. They just used it to promote the fight right after. No time. They interviewed Drakers about it. Hey, uh, what would you think about that, <laughs> that fight that we didn't schedule um, in the crowd? <laughs> right after. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was live. Uh, yeah. He said Sean had no power. I see. I see. I see what now. No power. Doing. Yeah, I think Drakers is going to try to implement some wrestling, though. He even tried it right there. He shot. He definitely took shot. Him down. Why he shoot? Took a while for Sean to get back up too. It took a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it took a minute. A it, took, it took a minute. He didn't shoot. Oh, <laughs> he didn't shoot. Got him now. Fuck it. Right. Oh. Episode twenty two. Right. Damn. The will versus the way. Guys, oh. I hope y'all enjoyed that. That was the first guest. I know we enjoyed that. that We're gonna crazy. try and do that a lot more. Have more guests on this. Mm-hmm. Um, delve into that mindsets because. That was awesome, and uh, you don't get to hear from many fighters, especially even on the regional scene, um, who have aspirations to get there. I mean, if well, the message we we want to bring and that we like to bring is like it's not just pertaining to fight fans, right? We break down the UFC cards and one championship and boxing and stuff like that all the time, of course. But we also talk about life and the life of martial artists and stuff like that. If you want to get into this game, or if you're already in this game. And uh, that's kind of what the will versus the way is supposed to be. The will and the way I've been in the game for seven, eight years now. He's been in the game for a year and a half now. I told you, comes out era, right? The casual. And so you get two different perspectives about what what the game is and, and, and how you should approach it. So, um, guys, hope you like this episode. Episode 22 is a special one for you guys. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, drop your thoughts down below, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. You sound like the it was on CNN. I like, hey, damn. a little bit. Man. I was like, damn. Uh, hire me. <laughs> what is up, Wade MMA family? New episodes of The Will vs. The Way drop weekly. Don't forget to check out our latest episodes and other MMA content on Wade MMA. Thank you guys for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.